The empires of England, Spain, France, and Portugal divided up the world and they were very active in terms of exploring the world and taking our lands illegally that were already occupied by indigenous nations worldwide. So they went to the Pope of the Catholic Church to validate the illegal taking of the lands. And what did the Pope do in the 14th century? He issued a papal bull. The papal bull provided instructions that indigenous peoples are not human or Christian. Because indigenous people are not human, they don't have sovereignty in government. I remember reading it and thinking, that doesn't make sense. How can you simply take over somebody's territory by saying you no longer exist or you never existed because we didn't, didn't know about you? But it wasn't until I was older and starting to, starting to educate myself on our history and what had happened and why our communities are in these states um, was, in, was when I heard the Doctrine of Discovery for the first time. So I just remember reading it and thinking like, this, is, this can't be real. This isn't, this isn't something that makes sense. This is something that's like inhumane and just not, not something that was fair to the people that were the protectors of this land. Another word for this is uh, terra nullius, empty land. And the land is made empty not by clearing the people out, but it's made empty through law. Chief Justice John Marshall basically said, in simple terms, we are sovereign because of the doctrine of discovery. We have the right to govern this land because we discovered it. And he wasn't talking about we in the American sense, he was talking about we in the white man sense. And that therefore, those nations that were here, those Indian nations that were here, are now semi-sovereign nations. So they're no longer sovereign. They are dependent upon our sovereignty, our willingness to let them retain some elements of sovereignty. It's relevant because not only is it the, basically the root of the whole structure of property law in Canada and the United States and Australia, uh, for instance, but uh, it is thoroughly enmeshed in the structures of our law so deeply that it's often difficult to even spot it. This fiction, this hidden foundation still lives with us because we don't assume, by and large, that Indigenous peoples today are primitive or have lower social skills on this kind of hierarchy of civilizations. Um, but nevertheless, the law continues to assume that sovereignty of the crown is paramount, the crown title is underlying all of our land, um, when in fact that comes from nowhere. It comes from just an assertion. The underlying question is how, in the Canadian context for instance, uh, where does the crown get its right to hold underlying title for all lands, which is the way that our law is structured? Where does the crown get its jurisdiction over all matters? Um, um, and there's this sense that this came out of the ether, it was always thus. Starting at the time of the first colonial incursions into the Americas, there had to be justification. Why did the colonial powers have the right to take over these lands and assert their sovereignty or their jurisdiction? What did they do about the fact that there were people here already who were living in, using these lands, exercising their own laws, having their own political structures? There had to be some sort of justification to allow that colonial authority to be asserted. 